Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 45. So this test is going to be a little bit of a special feature and uh, the reason being is that you can see we are currently lined up to be filming on the Halon system uh, portion of my demonstration and display system. So at the end of System Test 44, for those of you who watch the video all the way to the end um, to catch my four or five minutes of rambling that I always do after I reset the DMP system. Um, in that video I mentioned how in the next test I was going to be focusing exclusively on the Halon system. And the reasons I gave for that was that the last time I really included this system um, in its entirety in a test was System Test 18 where I did another special focusing on the system. And the uh, the last time before that, that I really filmed the system as a whole and explained all the devices and the panels, were in the original system tests I did, system tests one through six. Um, and those tests were with this exact same system. I just hadn't built the expansion um, onto the, the second board for the SXLEX and the um, DMP yet. Uh, but the, the thing with those was they were filmed when I was like, I think 10 or 11 years old, so they're a little bit iffy. Um, but they're still up if you want to go back and check them out. I won't recommend it, but they're, they are there. But anyways, in those tests, the only thing I had was the Halon system here, so all of the videos focused exclusively on this. Um, so the reason that this really doesn't appear in my videos anymore is because... Well, first of all, I already ran system or uh, six system tests on it, um, and the devices on this system do not change. The smoke detectors, notification appliances, uh, initiating devices on here are all original to this system, so I do not swap them out for other devices for the tests like I do with the SXLEX system. Um, for that reason, you can't really get more than a couple videos out of it for a while because you'd just be recording the same thing over and over and over again. I was lucky to be able to squeeze six system tests out of it back in the day and that was basically by doing a separate test for testing each device which, you know, that's fun for a while but regardless, I haven't shown this in a long time so I think it's time to go back, look back over it in detail for those who uh, are just starting to get into this hobby and watch my channel or those who just haven't seen the system in a while and maybe want to look back over it in a video that is not as cringeworthy as the early ones. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and start with the notification appliances up at the top of the current frame and we'll work our way down. So the notification for this system is uh, supplied by a pretty standard combination for fire suppression systems a vibrating bell and then a in this case an electromechanical horn but usually you'll see some sort of combination of a horn and a bell um, and that's used to indicate the different levels of alarm on the panel and the uh, the place in the discharge sequence so the bell on the left hand side this is an Ansel model number 57549 this is a vibrating bell with a six inch gong this activates during all alarm conditions on the panel if it's a general alarm condition, which means a fire has been detected but discharge is not imminent nor is it occurring, this will ring in a slow pulse, um, probably 60 beats per minute, so it's rather slow. And then um, during pre-discharge, this will bump up to 120 beats per minute march time or fast pulse as it's listed in the documentation for this panel. And then during the actual discharge, it will be steady. The uh, vibratone horn over on the right hand side follows just about the same sequence as the bell does with a few exceptions. This is a Federal Signal model number 450D. It has a Fick Wench Halon strobe on it which is a model number, um, let me check real quick, it's a model number 20-048. Um, you can see it has the halon lettering on it and then the weatherproof gasket around the outside even though this device was installed indoors. So this horn does not activate at all during a general alarm condition um, and neither does the strobe. I think the strobe doesn't activate. I haven't used this in a while but I'm, I'm fairly certain the strobe does not activate for general alarm. Um, and then 
once the system enters the pre-discharge, then it uh, catches up with the bell and goes into the fast pulse, and then during discharge, it is also sounding and steady, and the strobe will activate um, starting with the pre-discharge phase, and then it does have audible silence on it when it is in the, um, the, the releasing stage. So if you silence it once the uh, agent has released, the strobe will continue flashing. Below the two notification appliances, we have the smoke detectors. They are Ansel model number SIF-24, and these are connected to zones 1 and 2, which are in a cross-zone configuration. So both of these smoke detectors would have had to activate on the system to um, start the pre-discharge sequence, and these were the only two detectors on the system, so it's just one detector per zone. Um, this system was installed in the late 1980s, um, and these detectors are original to it. They don't have a magnetic test on them or any sort of test feature, and they're also so old that the sensitivity on them is essentially gone. Um, for that reason, I wired in those two key switches um, to both zones 1 and 2 in order to test them. The detectors themselves still work. Um, I've just never been able to get a, a smoky enough condition around them, nor do I really want to, um, that is sufficient to set them off. They're ionization, so obviously the radioactive material in them will decay over time and the detector won't be as functional or perhaps not functional at all, but they do still power up and you can see the, the little LEDs blinking on them very faintly. Um, and these will actually blink for a very long time after you power down the system, um, which is kind of unnerving. But anyway, so that's the story with the two zones, and it's still set up for the cross-zone activation. So both of the two key switches will need to be turned to um, set the system into the pre-discharge phase. So now we've made it down to the panel itself, in addition to some other initiating devices. The panel is an Ansel Autopulse 2000. It was manufactured in November of 1987 and installed between 1988 and 1989. Um, this thing got pulled out of the building in, uh, I want to say it was 2009 or 2010, one of those years. Um, it has four zones on it technically, zone one, zone two, a manual pull zone, and then an abort switch zone. The abort switch should be on its own box, um, but when they installed the system, they drilled it right into the front cabinet, so you can see the abort button is directly on the panel, which I guess works out just fine. Next to it, you can see one of the DMP keypads. Um, that matches up with the whole system. That's not exclusive to the uh, Halon system whatsoever. Directly below that is an Ansel pneumatic pressure switch. I forget the model number right off the top of my head. It's really long and kind of looks like a rather secure password because it's all mixed up with numbers and letters. But that would be connected directly to the um, Halon actuator and whenever the Halon would discharge some of the, the pressurized gas would be sent up into the um, attachment on the bottom of that station below the label and that will actually flip up a switch inside of there and that's wired into the manual pull station zone. The reason being that sometimes on these systems you can manually activate them by pulling a chain or in case of an accidental activation, it will set off the system as if it was um, in the release stage instantly to warn everybody around it the system is discharging. Below that we have our manual pull station, which kind of isn't much of a pull station at all. It's just a cover over a toggle switch. You pull open the cover and you flip down the switch and that manually activates the system. Um, and that's on no delay. As soon as you flip that, the releasing circuit will fire and the, uh, the horns and the bell will go off immediately. And the last item on the Halon system itself, and probably the most uncommon, is the actual Halon actuator that would have fit over the uh, bottle of Halon and supplied the ability to release that gas um, to the system. You can see that little nozzle Right here, this is where a hose would have connected up to the pressure switch um, that I was discussing earlier. And then down below here is where this actuator would have connected to the bottle. Um, this is a model number REFCO, manufactured by Ansel. 
Uh, it still kind of sort of works. Obviously, um, there's no bottle connected to it and there's no pressure on it, so it's it's not going to do a whole lot, but it is connected to the releasing circuit since it's part of the supervision on that circuit. Um, and it, it still, you know, powers up during a, uh, a release, but I'm not really sure what it does internally. I just know that as far as the system is concerned, it's installed on there and it's functioning. So um, that's why I still have it mounted up on the board here. So now that we've got all the devices uh, out of the way, I think we're going to move back up over to those key switches below the smoke detectors on zones one and two. And we're going to uh, set the system into the pre-discharge state. So the first thing I'm going to do is activate um, one of these key switches on the zones and um, it'll go into the general alarm stage. Um, it'll stay in the general alarm stage indefinitely. Um, that doesn't start counting down to release and the only thing we'll be hearing is the bell activating in slow pulse. So here we go. the second zone on the system. It'll go into the pre-discharge state and it's going to start the release countdown. You'll hear the system switch over to fast pulse and the horn and strobe will activate. So now the alarm is silenced on the panel. You can see we have the indicators on the panel for zone one, zone two, general alarm, pre-discharge, and release. And throughout the alarm sequence, I was panning up and down. Um, so you should have been able to see those indicators activate um, throughout the process. I'm going to go ahead and silence the DMP keypads here. And I think I should be able to silence this buzzer. Yeah, there we go. You just need to hit it twice since it only has one silence key. Um, so yeah, um, I'll pan back up for a second so we can take a look at the strobe performing audible silence on the system. So as you can see, we have audible silence as that strobe is going to keep flashing. Um, and that's to continue to warn people of the fact that there's the halon in the room that was protected and that's going to need time to vent out so that'll keep uh, flashing until the system is completely reset so speaking of resetting the system we can go ahead and do that and we can just hold down the reset key and just like that everything is reset um, so now we can move on to the manual pull station and show the uh, instant manual activation capability that this panel has. Alrighty, so in this camera angle I have right now, you can see both the manual pull station and the uh, three LEDs on the panel for general alarm, pre-discharge, and release. When I activate this pull station, um, you'll see that it's going to skip right over the general alarm and pre-discharge states and it's going to go immediately into the releasing uh, state on the panel and you'll hear the um, bell and the horn both come on steady and you should be able to see the strobe flashing as it reflects off of some of the other parts on this system. The brake rod in this pull station is just a, uh, a piece of plastic it's flexible so I can reuse it. It's not going to break, but it'll come flying out of the pull station when I open this up. Um, alrighty, so here we go. Alright, 
hit the silence key on the panel, the DMP system's going off again. And to reset the station, you just gotta flip the switch back up. It doesn't have any sort of locking or latching mechanism on it. Uh, my brake rod went all over the place. Uh, where did it? There it is. All right. So I'll stick that back in real quickly before I forget. All right, so that's back in place. And with the pull station taken care of, we can reset the system again. And my phone's in the way of shutting the door. So now we can go ahead and reset the DMP system. Uh, you can see there's a trouble on the SXLEX, and then there's the Halon system alarm on point five oh one. The trouble on the SXLEX is because I swapped the uh, battery pack out of there into the Autopulse system so that we could have this trouble free. Like I've been mentioning the past couple system tests, I need to get a second set of uh, standby batteries for these panels since one of mine won't hold a charge anymore. Um, so when we go ahead and reset this, it'll clear out the um, Halon system alarm and then the uh, SXLEX trouble will remain. I don't think you were able to see it on camera, but um, several times throughout the test, there was an intermittent um, trouble condition for the Halon system as well, because um, when this panel goes into alarm, it'll actually activate both the um, um, trouble point, like the trouble relay in there, which is wired into the DMP system, along with the dedicated alarm relay in there. So. Um, this panel is actually pretty interesting because it has relays for just about any condition you can think of on the panel. It has a dedicated trouble relay, a relay for um, general alarm, which is what I have wired into the DMP system that will basically activate um, during any condition on the panel. Um, that results in alarm, so it doesn't have to be... Um, you know, into the pre-discharge or release stages, even just the most basic alarm will trip in the DMP. Um, it has another relay specifically for pre-discharge, so that's to shut things down um, as the panel is preparing to discharge. And then there's another relay specifically for when the panel has gone into the releasing stage. Then there's another set of relays um, that are programmable, so you can pick from any of the functions of the other relays to duplicate on that relay and all of these relays mentioned have two different set of contacts so you can connect like 10 or 12 different circuits into this panel and have it controlled however you need it to be so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and revisiting the system in whole um, like I did during the early system tests I know I enjoyed looking at it again so if you have any questions, please let me know, but for now, thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.